Hi, everybody. My name is Dave Esposito, and the person in the screen adjoining is uh, Joe Esposito, the owner of Esposito Company Incorporated, um, we, uh, a company which has been doing demolition, excavation, lots of other things for uh, local customers in the Baltimore area for over 40, it's almost 45 years now, Joe? Yes, since 1973, so it's more than 45. Right, right. As a matter of fact, I worked with my older brother back in college, back around that time period, right, right when he was getting his business started. And um, it's really changed a lot. He's become a real uh, kind of mainstay for local contractors, particularly plumbers who need work done, uh, digging sewer lines, digging, ex uh, doing excavation for new additions. And uh, Joe's built quite a business for himself. And today, what I thought I'd do, I, by the way, just by further introduction, I do a lot of work on Joe's website. I pretty much handle his website. So I thought it might be a nice idea to uh, take advantage of the tech today, have Joe in on a, uh, have my brother, Joe, in on a, uh, just a phone call where I ask him a few questions about uh, some things in the past and his beginnings and all, and also some things about how he works with customers these days and what kinds of projects um, he's, uh, you know, about. So, uh, Joe, uh, so tell me a little bit about the beginning of your business. You were just out of college, is that right? And how did that go, Joe? Oh, what I... made you decide to do, to do landscaping, excavation, contracting business? Well, I was doing social work at the time, and I was, um, it was mostly night work with delinquents. And uh, I started, since it was mostly night work, I was bored during the day and met someone who had a general maintenance landscaping business and he wanted somebody to help him to work first. So I started working with him and then started running a portion of his business. And uh, I did that for about three years, two or three years. So that would have been uh, 1970 one to two and three right in through there right. and off and on and um, then he made me an offer to work for a year running a section of the business and then I decided to go into business on my own and, um, so and when we started doing business on our own we were mowing lawns that was what I first started doing right. and I always hated mowing lawns but you have to do whatever you have to do so uh, and as that progressed through the mid '70s, um, we started doing different kind of work, uh, more in the um, putting in lawns for people and and stuff like that, and general maintenance, more more than just lawns. And as I started realizing the value of machinery, then. I started buying different machinery and learning how to operate it and going into grading and clearing and seeding, sodding. We used to do a lot of sod work back then. That got very popular. And uh, here I am. Yeah. And um, Joe, um, what would you say is the mainstay of your business today? When I look at your blog post, which we, we do a blog post almost every week with Joe's website, whenever he has a new project that he's finished, um, he'll take a few pictures. Sometimes they're not very good pictures, but my brother is not a photographer. He is a, he is a contractor. Um, and I live in Rochester. He lives in Baltimore, so I can't be a part of the picture. <clears throat> anyway, once you get past the pictures, you, you see a, a pattern. And it seems to me, big pattern seems to be excavation for uh, water and sewer lines or working with plumbers to, to make those kinds of repairs or installations. Tell me about how you work with a contractor, Joe, a plumbing contractor uh, to, to do like, let's say a, a water line installation. Well, rather than them renting a piece of equipment and having the liability, number one of uh, digging the trench, et cetera, in case they hit something, um, they hire me. I can't do it quite as cheaply as they can, but sometimes it ends up being, about the same, uh, where they're not worrying about that. They know I'll be there and they know I know what I'm doing. And we call Miss Utility and uh, get the layout of where, where the underground wires or, or uh, lines can be. And then it's just a matter of working with them. We start at the, wherever we wanna start, you start at the beginning and you 
find the, the old line and just work it right on out if it's an existing house. A new house is easy because you're not worrying about anything. You mm -hmm. just you find out where they want to put the line in the house. But even though you'll know where the line is coming in the house on older houses, it doesn't necessarily go straight out to the street. It'll go under walkways, it'll go under driveways. Uh, sometimes it makes you kind of crazy. You just have to be patient and find it and get it so that uh, a water line is easier and that it's not very deep. It's usually 30 inches, 36 inches. So we don't have to worry about a trench box or anything like that. What is a trench box, Joe, just to, just to let- Well, a trench know. box is, is for the safety of the man in the, in the hole. Uh, and it's actually mandated by the counties, most of the counties now, unless you can uh, really widen the trench so wide and on a, what they call V the trench. So you slant each wall in on a 45. So you can't, you can't have a cave in. Because at some point if with a, at three feet, it doesn't really matter a whole lot, two and a half feet, something like that. But once you get into the five to 13 or 14 feet deep, you have a hole and mm -hmm. the guy in the hole has to be protected. So a trench box is a, it's like two walls that are joined together and you have to make the, the trench about four feet wide at that point. And you can grab the box with your hoe or chain it with a chain and set it down in the hole. And if it's really deep, you get two boxes and stack them one on top of the other. It's a pain for the guy working in it, but it's safe. If the walls come in, it's just gonna hit the sides of the box and won't go any further. Um, it's a pain for the guy in the hole because it slows everything down because you're working with braces that are in the way, basically. But, uh, you know, your alternative is a cave-in that could yeah. kill somebody. Yeah, and probably very quickly, too. It wouldn't take but a it moment. It doesn't take long. Yeah, it's not yeah. like you can, but, you know, a ton of dirt is nothing. A ton of dirt is <clears throat> seven to nine wheelbarrows of dirt. So the work can be tough. It's it's combination of machine and hand work, Joe, yeah. mostly? Yeah. And most well, it's mostly machine work to get it set up, and then I have to wait on them, and be available for anything that they need. If we're setting a, a, if you're using a trench box, and you're you have to keep moving the box in the trench, so they'll hook up a, a part of the line, and then we slide the box on. The guy gets out of the trench, slide the box on down the trench. He gets back in, hooks up the next piece. You know, make sure the bottom is. The way you want it to be and um, all the way to where he hooks into the street. So Joe, you, you probably work with some of these uh, licensed master plumber contractors. Um, you've had you've had relationship with them for years and and has that has that been a good thing, Joe? Has that been like uh, you work together really well? I would imagine you develop a real they want you to do their excavation. And what you know, why? Well they know I don't make too many mistakes. I'm not saying that I don't ever make mistakes because sometimes you'll be digging along and there'll be other lines that are in the hole that aren't even marked or anything. And they, they won't necessarily want to cooperate. You know, I've had, had them where the gas, water and sewer line were in the same trench at different levels. And that, you know, that'll make you crazy. You're not worrying about the water line because typically the water line ends up getting replaced. If it's above the gas line, uh, above the, the sewer line, you're going to hit it. And um, it's not that difficult or expensive to replace that. The gas line is another issue. And when we have the gas line, then we have to really find it by hand mm -hmm. and then just stay away from it. And, and, mm -hmm. and we've had them where we've had to brace them up in the air so that we could dig the trench deep enough to get to the sewer line. And, and if I'm, am I correct in thinking that if it is a gas line that needs replacement, that's done by a utility company or is that done with you guys? Well, both. The, the, the plumber, the, the licensed plumbers are typically registered for gas also. So <clears throat> they have to be uh, certified to do gas work. But you'll usually close it off the street. You know, you do it a little bit in conjunction with the gas company so they know that you're working there. and. Uh, are available, you know, in case there's a problem. 
And Joe, um, I'm, we're going to keep this uh, little Zoom talk a little short because we're going to do this again. We're not going to do it uh, time after time. We're going to have continued pictures on your uh, blog, your, your um, company blog uh, of jobs that you do as you do them. And, and I would say one thing about the blog, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you decide to go look at it, you will see a lot of repetition. You'll see that, you know, probably the water lines and replacement installations are they seem to be toward the top, at least over the last few years. But Joe is also is also kind of a specialist with house demolition, uh, footings for additions, um, also uh, pool demolition, which has become something over the years where people put these pools back in in the 60s and 70s, and now the kids have grown up, and now they've got a hazard in the yard. And that's a special kind of project too. Joe, uh, Esposito Company Inc. has has been um, a party to many of those demolitions and returning the lawn to a safe and and really beautiful condition. Basically, you know, the 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 pool gets removed or filled in, the hole gets filled in, and normally a lawn is put back in. But sometimes people put in other things. You know, they have the ability to do more with their yard at that point. But so, but Joe, I wanted to ask you when you're working a project with the contractors. Uh, your fellow contractors, where are the where are the customers? What are they are they hovering? Are they watching? Do they have questions? You know, do they see what's going on? And they and and I'm I'm guessing that even though their yard is getting messed up, of course it's going to be put back together. And there's a lot of there's some noise and there's a commotion and dirt everywhere and all that. They know that this is a project that gets done once every fifty years. So they're gonna get this project done. It's gonna be done right. It's gonna be put back together right. They're not gonna have a lot of work to do on it. And they shouldn't have, a. from what you've told me about how you run things, you like to have, um, you don't like the customer to have to do much of anything except just watch the work proceed properly and you know, you handle it. So what, tell me a little bit about the customers and what, what you know, I don't oh. know if you have any anecdotes or, yeah, you have all different kinds of customers. Some just want to get it done and they go to work and that's fine. If they have a good relationship with their plumber, they're really not worried about it. He has access to the house if he needs to get into it and, and that sort of thing. Uh, some places you'll go, the, the kids will want to come out. It's like a babysitting service. They will stay way out of the way and the parents will stay with them and uh, it could be fun for them. but. Um, other times the customers can be there or people can be there. It's according to the job that you're doing, all jobs are not wide open. Most of the jobs, you know, if you're doing jobs in, in townhouses, it's very tight quarters. And all the way around, it's tight trying to get room to work for, because of parking. And uh, you know, it's all got to be put out in advance so that you have enough room to work. And if you don't have enough room to move the material that you're digging, it's got to go out in the street. Sometimes you have to deal with the local police department to make sure you can do that. I mean, permits have to be pulled for all these sorts of things. So, uh, and the plumber always has to pull a permit for putting a sewer or water mm -hmm. on it anyway. So they're kind of on notice, but um, I would say people are there and um, they kind of, it's always a leap of faith for them because they see their, their yard getting destroyed. And it's not always, you know, you're not always digging up a grass lawn. You're, sometimes you're taking trees out because the, the mm. sewer or water line may have been put in 50 to 100 years ago. Mm. And they, somebody planted a tree right over top of it. Now it's three feet across. And you have to get a tree company to come and take that out and the stump out. And then you're dealing with a real mess at that point. But... Um, because that's all got to be dug out to, to get to where you need to be. But um, I, don't, I don't like for people to have to, you, usually I'm there alone anymore. If we're doing a sewer job, the plumber has help and I'll bring two machines so I can grade it off nicer than being just grading it off with a backhoe or an excavator. And so I can put the lawn on grade and then we'll touch it up uh, and seed it. So, and make sure the walkways are clean, you know, and uh, I mean, if you're charging people for it, you shouldn't have to, they shouldn't have to do anything. Right. And there's very little settling in the yard the way we do it, 
sometimes you may get a little after a couple of years. If it's a real deep hole, you're not compacting the material as it's going. You're backfilling it, and you can compact the top uh, by walking it in with a mm -hmm. machine, a little track machine. But it, um, you may get a little <laughs> bit of settlage. In the old days, they and they still do it a lot today. I mean, it's hard to grade with a backhoe. They'll, they'll leave a, they'll dig the trench and then they'll <laughs> pile the dirt over the trench. So you know you have to deal with it, but you really like to leave that alone. It's kind of an eyesore for about a year and let it get mm -hmm. rained on a lot and start to settle. And then they can grade it off again and there's a minimal amount of settling after that point. In any event, you're there, they have your name and number, they can call you if they have questions. And Yeah, and, you, and I always tell them, uh, call if you have questions, it's not a, a problem. It, it, uh, if they ask me, am I going to guarantee that it's going to, will it, that it won't settle and I basically tell them, no, I'll guarantee that it will settle a little bit, but, um, and there's not much that you can do about that. Uh, mm -hmm. But except wait for it to settle and then, and then regrade that area at a later regrade. time, which, you know, there's a charge for if they call yeah. or they can do it themselves according to how bad it is. Okay. Well, I think that's, I think for today, Joe, that's kind of a topic we've looked at and uh, I'll think up a few more topics and over the next, uh, few weeks and months, maybe we'll do a few more of these. And um, in the meantime, um, what was I gonna say? Um, I wanna thank, thank you all for taking a look at this, at, uh, for those of you interested in this sort of thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, uh, we'll be back. And um, again, you know, Esposito Company Inc. is really quite a, quite an institution in the Baltimore uh, demolition and excavation community. It's one of the older businesses. As, uh, as my brother gets older, he gets wiser. So he does more with uh, more work with uh, what? He works smart. So, all right, Joe. Well, look, take care. See you all. Thank you very much. Thanks. Nice talking to you.